Hey everybody, it's David with St. Cards, and in this video I'm going to walk you through the unboxing or the unbagging, as it were, of the Mendicant Order expansion from the 2020 collection here at St. Cards. And so inside of this brown kind of uh, Mendicant Order bag, you could say here, got some Carmelite and Franciscan colors going on, is a protective box that will be holding uh, 53 cards. Uh, of Dominicans and Carmelites and Franciscans and, and, and much more as well as uh, 36 treasure and you might see some different colors in here if you're not familiar with the 2020 collection especially this yellow diamond treasure which is worth 100 treasures uh, and we've also got the amethyst and uh, sapphires and, and rubies and of course these are all gemstones that are in the foundation of heaven so there's all sorts of correlations uh, that you can draw here as we gather all this treasure to give to Jesus. Also, we've got a rule book. This is the Mendicant Order expansion with Purple Game Mat rule book. It's four pages long. It's got an explanation of the rules, the additional rules that are added to the game with this expansion. On the back are some special ability notes that we'll talk through. And then, of course, in this tutorial, I'm going to explain through all 16 of these special abilities that you get with the Religious Order icons by adding this cool expansion uh, to your collection. So I'll set this down here, and then last but certainly not least is the actual purple game mat. Uh, this is what it looks like whenever you receive it with a nice ribbon there, and once you undo the ribbon, it will uh, open up just like this, and you'll want to just set this uh, to the side of the play area, or if you've got the blue game mat, you can add it to the uh, purple diamond side of the uh, of the blue game mat and it fits across there just perfectly like so and so we'll talk through in this video uh, what the mendicant order expansion does and so let's dive into what exactly these six orders do on the purple game mat here with saint cards first and foremost let's talk about what happens when you add the purple game mat to your game of saint cards what we recommend to start off with is to take a base game and add in the 53 Mendicant Order expansion cards. And, you're, and here you're gonna have your Dominicans, your Franciscans, your Carmelites, your Trinitarians, all the great uh, Mendicant Order saints and blesseds. Um, in particular, uh, you could say there's a focus on the 13th through the 16th century here. Uh, but here you've got John of Cologne, Margaret of Hungary, Teresa of the Andes, Didicus of Alcala, uh, Angelus of Jerusalem, the great Carmelite, Blessed William of Toulouse, the Augustinian, uh, St. Benedict of San Fratello, San Fratello, Blessed Tomaso de Olera, St. Simon de Rojas, all sorts of awesome saints to add to your collection. What we're going to do next is we're going to talk through what happens when you add the purple game mat to uh, your game of Saint Cards. So to start off with, what we recommend is to take the base game of Saint Cards and to mix it up with the Mendicant Order expansion. Uh, and so you'll end up with about 150 cards. So go ahead and give that a good shuffle six, seven, eight times. Uh, and again, if you don't know uh, exactly, maybe you've got like three or 400 Saint cards. How do I find all the cards from the base game? Uh, if you go and look in the bottom right hand corner, there's a really cool numbering scheme here where you can look at the second number. Uh, there's a number, then a dash, then another number, then a dash, and then another number. But in the middle there, that middle number, it's going to say one. And uh, that will allow you to go through your piles and get all the cards, all the 106 cards from the base game uh, together in one place finally again. And that's a scheme that works for all expansions. So, for example, the Doctors of the Church expansion, that middle number is two. The Holy Helpers, the middle number is three. So that might be a good way to, to get the base game back together again if you haven't had it together in a while. But grab the base game and mix it up with the Mendicant Order expansion. And I'm going to go ahead and do that right now uh, for the sake of the example. And once they're all shuffled up, uh, you're going to deal the cards out to everybody as normal. Now during gameplay, there's a couple of things and you'll notice them on the front page of the rules here. And it may be helpful just to set the front page of the rules to the side of the purple, uh, uh, the play area or the purple game mat to start off with. But it says at the very top that only cards with a religious order symbol can be used on the purple game mat. And that is certainly true. Uh, there are 16 icons here, ranging from the Benedictines all the way to the Salesians, along with um, the year of their founding or the century of their founding. And uh, the only cards that can trigger any special abilities on this mat are cards that actually have these symbols on them. Similarly, if there's a card that has maybe more than one, uh, like you, know, you say St. Anthony of Padua was Augustinian, um, as well as Franciscan. 
then you have to decide um, which one of, of those orders you're going to play the card on. But uh, any other card that does not have that icon is going to be played on the turned up card, just like any normal game of same cards. So the purple game mat is reserved only for the cards that have um, uh, the, the religious um, icon or uh, are a, a result of a trigger of a special ability that you play whenever you play a card with a religious icon on it. And, and again, the purple game mat and this whole expansion uh, is really meant to emphasize the Dominican orders uh, and to kind of di discern the difference between, okay, what's a Franciscan, what's a Dominican, what's a Carmelite. Uh, each of the special abilities that we're about to talk about are uh, going to give a little bit of a flavor of what that order does in the life of the church. And so in a fun way, we're going to learn uh, not just how to play the game of sync cards with the Purple Game app, but also we're going to find out uh, a little bit more about each individual order, which is super fun. Also, it says here that on your turn, you may play two cards. You can play a card either as normal for the regular game, or you can play on the purple game mat. Now, the couple couple things to point out here. If you decide to play a card on the purple game mat, let me just say uh, St. Elizabeth of Hungary here, right? She was a tertiary Franciscan. I would have to, of course, play her on the Franciscan space right here. And then that would trigger the Franciscan ability. I would not be able to play her on any other spot other than the Franciscan place because that's, of course, the symbol that's on her card. So all that to say, you can play up to two orders on the purple game mat for every turn, but you may not initiate more than two cards on, on any particular turn. So let's let's go over that real quick because it's super important. Let's just say you want to just play the regular game of St. Cards. You don't even want to play on the purple game mat. That's fine. You can actually play up to two times, just like the game rules say. You can play your first card, and then if the second card has at least three or more matches, um, on the turned up card, you can play a second card. And now that we've added the purple game mat, you can do a little bit of both if you wanted to. You could play on the turned up card and you could play on the purple game mat. Or you could play two on the purple game mat and then your turn would be over. Or you could play twice on the regular play area and not even, not even worry about the purple game mat. But again, just like the normal game rules, that uh, second card has to get you at least three treasure for you to be able to play. All that to say, you're gonna be able to accomplish a lot by being able to play two cards potentially on the purple game mat or one on each uh, on your individual turn. A couple things, there are some cool triggers here like the Dominican, which we'll talk about, uh, or the Camaldolese, which is in the Monastic and Clerics regular expansion, um, will allow you to play even more than two cards on a particular turn. So just keep in mind that once you initiate the play, there might be some abilities that give you extra cards or give you an ability to play again that does not uh, count towards your initiated plays. You get up to two initiated plays per turn, uh, but sometimes you might be able to play three or four or even five times or even more, depending on what um, special abilities that you trigger on the purple game mat. And we'll get, we'll get to that here in just a second. One other rule to mention is that once a card is laid on the purple game mat, it's played. And the way that we do it here in our home is, if your finger is still touching it, it's not played yet, but as soon as your finger lifts up off of, as long as it's a legal play, as soon as your finger's up, it's laid down. Now, depending on what age you're playing with or, or what group, certainly you can modify that for your situation. Uh, but we think it's best to, to just focus on, you know, once you lay it down, let's move on and let's just keep playing because we've got a lot of fun things to do here. So uh, there's a lot of different decisions that you're going to have with the Purple Game Map. And we find that as soon as it's down, then you go on and you resolve the triggers uh, at, as you put it there. So then you'll find that as rule number four there on your rule sheet. I've already mentioned that if a card has multiple orders represented, you have to choose one. So some of these cards in here will have two different orders assigned to them, uh, and you'll have to decide which one to play them on, but you will not be able to initiate both order abilities uh, with one card. You'll have to choose one over the other. Another really important thing is if there's a wild card that's turned up, and again, a wild card, as you remember, is either a member of the Holy Family or of the orders of the angels. If this is turned up on the turned up card, you may not play on the purple game mat. You have to resolve that turned up card before anybody at the table can play on the purple game mat. One other thing to keep in mind is that if you play a card on the purple game mat, like here's St. Catherine of Siena. She was a Dominican tertiary, right? Um, so I would play her on the Dominican space. Uh, that would be the only place I could play her, but she's also a doctor of the church. She's also a stigmatist. If I play a card 
on the purple game mat, I will not be able to use any of the other abilities that are on that card. So uh, normally if I you know, played her on the turned up card, I could activate her doctor ability, activate her stigmatist ability. If I decide to play her as a Dominican then on the purple game mat, then I don't get uh, to activate any of those other uh, cool uh, components of her card. So just keep that in mind that if you want to take advantage of some of those things, whether it be a bilocator or a 2X from where two or more are gathered or, or stigmatist or holy helper, uh, if you lay it down on the purple game mat, it's, o it's over. You have to focus on just the trigger for that particular order. And then finally, a cool little thing too is that sometimes there'll be some extra treasure at the end of the game on the purple game mat. So the winner of the game will gather the treasure from everybody as normal. But also if there's any extra treasure on the purple game mat, make sure to grab that extra treasure to lay that at the feet of Jesus so we can totally pile it on for him at the end of the game. So with that, those are the additional rules. And you might already be thinking, wow, this is a lot, right? Uh, yeah, it is. And what we found is that after playing maybe one or two or maybe even three games that it, you really start to get the feel for what happens whenever you play with the purple game mat. And so what I'd like to do next is kind of step you through, uh, for the mendicant orders anyway, what the special abilities do in the Mendicant Order expansion. And then in other videos, you, you know the Mendicant Order expansion only has six of the 16 orders. In the Monastic and Cleric's Regular expansion, you've got six more orders. And in the Religious expansion, the 2020 Booster deck, you've got another four orders to round everything out. And you can watch those other videos on how those uh, cards work um, whenever you get done with this one. Uh, for now though, we'll focus in on the second and third page of the rules. And what we recommend and the way we design this is so that it can be opened up and set to the side of the play area because it's going to be referenced a lot during the game. On the back page are further explanations, so if for whatever reason you read it and it doesn't make any sense, so what we do is we just recommend opening it up to here and this is going to detail what all of the different orders do. And I'll talk you through this real quick before we go into each of the examples. We start off here with the Benedictines, uh, of course, on the purple game mat, they are the very first order that's uh, that's uh, that's shown. Uh, they were founded in 529 by St. Benedict of Nursia in the 6th century. And you're going to find as we march down that these are all in historical order of their founding. Uh, some people think that the Augustinians were founded by St. Augustine. Certainly he wrote the rule, but the official starting date of the Augustinians was in the 13th century. So they find themselves between the Servites and the Jesuits there. Uh, but all that to say, it's a little bit of a history lesson as we lay it out here. Also, uh, I'll just point out that for each trigger, we have some cool little codes here that kind of share with you what each of these triggers do. Some, uh, some special abilities give you treasure, some of them cost you treasure but give you cards, some of them give you an opportunity to give a gift to others, and so on and so forth. And so we have a really quick uh, kind of reference sheet on the side here to show you what this does. And then to get a little more detail, you can read about exactly what you do once you lay that down, and we'll talk through those here in just a second. But we want to go ahead and just take this and lay it to the side because we're going to use this as reference during gameplay and just leave it opened up here off to the side. So at the beginning of the game, we're going to shuffle up as normal and go ahead and deal out the cards depending on how many people we're playing with. In our family, even if we're playing with three or four or five people, we really like to start with seven cards. Uh, but keep in mind that starting with seven cards versus four or five can, of course, um, uh, you, know, adjust, you know, adjust the length of the game and how that works. Uh, but we'll go ahead and just deal out some cards. And each player, you know, percentage-wise, after you know getting seven cards, you should end up with uh, a religious order in your hand. If you don't, that's okay. Part of the strategy while you're playing with the purple game mat could be to just draw some cards until you get one, because the triggers that you get are super cool. The first trigger that we're gonna talk through is the Dominican trigger. And so I have right here St. John of Cologne. So instead of playing St. John of Cologne on the turned up card, which is St. Agnes of Montepulciano, uh, instead of playing St. John of Cologne on the turned up card, I'm gonna take St. John of Cologne and I'm gonna play him on the Dominican space. And the Dominican order trigger is unique in that the more Dominicans that are present on the purple game mat, the more treasure you'll be able to receive. So the idea with the Dominican is that uh, just like in the 13th century, it spread like wildfire and, and, and sons were just leaving their families to go uh, join up with St. Dominic and these, uh, and these, mendicant, um, uh, and, and these mendicant brothers uh, to go be missionaries or to go, uh, to go study or to go preach, uh, to go die as a martyr, whatever it is, like just all to fight the Albigensians. Uh, it spread like wildfire, right? And in the same way, we want to incentivize everybody to start playing Dominicans over here. So the first time you play a Dominican, uh, you're going to receive three treasure because you get three 
uh, treasure for every Dominican on the Purple Game Mat, and there is no limit to it. So if I place the 10th Dominican on the Purple Game Mat for the game, I would get 30 treasure. And you can already see why we have the yellow diamond for 100, because uh, you play games with the Purple Game Mat, you're gonna end up over 100, and sometimes we get over 200 or maybe even 300, which is super fun. Uh, parents, fair warning, uh, this is a very um, attractive component to the game, and you might find that your kids are playing for hours and hours like ours. Uh, they'll have these epic games. I've played many of them with them, uh, but just keep that in mind. Fair warning, you may ha it may uh, have a little bit of a monopoly or overnight component to it uh, where you have to uh, stop, go to bed, wake up the next day and finish it out because these games can get out of hand sometimes, but it's super fun. So all this to say, the Dominicans give you three treasure for every Dominican that's on the, uh, on the game mat. And then the cool part is too, that as soon as you play a Dominican, you get your treasure, however many Dominicans are, are on the purple game mat, and then you get to take the top card of the deck and draw it into your hand. And then you get to play immediately play another card from your hand. It can be any card. It doesn't have to be the card you just drew. So you can play another card on the purple game mat. You can play it on the turned up card. You can play it anywhere without penalty. It's possible that you could play a Dominican, get your treasure, get your card, play another Dominican, get even more treasure get a card. Play another Dominican, get even more treasure, get a card, and it can go on and on and on. The, the key is to keep track of the fact that you initiated with one Dominican, and if you keep playing Dominicans, that's perfectly fine. So it is a strategy to gather a lot of Dominicans and maybe even to wait a little bit until someone else has played some Dominicans before you get started, but there's nothing that can compare to that Dominican steamroll where you just keep playing Dominicans and it's a lot of fun, okay? So St. Louis Bertrand is another Dominican. So on my turn, I'm gonna play St. Louis Bertrand and draw another card. And then I've got um, St. Uh, you know, let's see here, I'm gonna play next. I'm gonna go ahead and play, I can play another card for free. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and play, hmm, St. Peter of Alcantara. He's a Franciscan, right? So by playing the Franciscan, I am ending that trigger for the Dominican, right? Because I'm not playing any more Dominicans. Uh, but because I played a Franciscan, I get to activate the Franciscan ability. The Franciscan ability is really cool because in a way you're kind of begging uh, your neighbors for treasure. Uh, you get to ask the player to your left and the player to your right how many cards they have in their hand. And that includes enrichment cards too, if you're playing with enrichment cards. And they have to count them and they have to be honest about how many cards they have. So let's say the neighbor over here has six and the neighbor over here has seven cards in their hand. I get to add both of those up and that's 13. And I get to also add however many Franciscans are on the purple game mat. In this case, there's only one. So I would actually get 14 treasures for playing St. Peter of Alicantara. Whoa, right? So 14 treasures just for playing one card. And because I started off with a Dominican, I played another Dominican, and then I laid down a Franciscan, I actually still can play another card this game because I've only initiated one time. So you can see really quick how you can get lots and lots of treasure by playing on the purple game map. So the Franciscan uh, is, is unique in that uh, at the beginning of the game, everybody's got their total of cards, but let's say your one neighbor is gathering a lot of cards and the other one's you know laying a lot of cards down. Sometimes my neighbor might have 10, but this other neighbor might have two. So you have to be really strategic about when you play the Franciscans. If you notice that your neighbors are starting to gather a lot of cards, that may be a really good time to play a Franciscan. Or even at the end of the game, whenever everyone's cards are kind of going out, there might be seven Franciscans on the mat. And if you play the eighth Franciscan, not only do you get to count uh, the cards to your left and right, but also however many Franciscans are on the purple game mat. So it's a really cool way uh, to emphasize the fact that the Franciscans uh, it, you know, they are mendicant orders, right? They take vows of poverty, chastity, and obedience. They give everything away uh, so that they can give it all to Jesus. And so they go around and they beg. Uh, they ask for funds. They ask for, uh, for money so that they can do the good work that they uh, are setting out to do for Jesus. And in the same way, when you play a Franciscan, that's kind of what you're doing too uh, whenever you're playing with the purple game mat here, which is super fun. Uh, so that's the Franciscan ability. Well, we've still got four more. Uh, let's go on here. We've got uh, the Trinitarians. And of course the Trinitarians, and here's one right here, the St. Michael of the Saints. Uh, a great Trinitarian. They were founded in 1198 in the late 12th century. So we play St. Michael of the Saints here for the Trinitarians. 
What's cool about the Trinitarians is that you get to choose one of three different things that you can do with the Trinitarian card. Of course, that makes sense. Three things, Trinitarian, ha ha, right? Uh, but the Trinitarians really do give you quite a bit of flexibility whenever you play them. The first thing that you can do, which is really cool, especially if you know what the top card is, is you can take the top card of the deck and flip it over. And in this case, it's St. Stephen the Proto-Martyr, right? And what you get to do is you get to look at the difference between the centuries of the card that you picked up and uh, the Trinitarian that you just played. In this case, the difference is 15. So I would get 15 treasures for this. And this is super effective, especially if I know what the top card of the deck is. Now keep in mind, it also could be um, yeah, maybe not as significant. So in this case, I would only get to treasure because the difference of the 14th and the 16th century here. Uh, sometimes I don't get any because it's the exact same century. Uh, so that's one of the abilities that you have with the Trinitarian is that uh, you get to play it and then you can take the top card and then look at the difference of the centuries between the card you drew and the Trinitarian that you played and that's how many treasure you receive. The next thing that you could do when you play a Trinitarian, and I'm going to do this again with St. Michael of the Saints, is I can take three treasures from my personal supply and give them to another player. If I do that, then I get to draw three cards. Of course, a lot of threes here, right? They're Trinitarian. So I take three treasures from my pile, give it to any player at the table, and then I get to draw three cards into my hand. And the last thing that you could choose to do with a Trinitarian, once I play the Trinitarian, is you could actually go to the discard pile. And in the discard pile, you could pick, uh, you get to do three things. You get to pick a card to keep. So I would find a card that I really wanted, or maybe I saw somebody else play, and take it and put it into my hand. Then I get to also take a card and give it to somebody else at the table. I might uh, want to be generous and give them something super cool, like maybe a Carmelite, because I've got other Carmelites that I want to cloister. We'll get to that in a second, right? Or I might want to give them a card that maybe it doesn't have a lot of matches and it might make it a little tricky for them to navigate through. Whatever it is, you, you have to give one of those cards to another player. And then you get to find another card to put at the very top before you put the discard pile back. So again, that uh, the Trinitarian you get, allows you to do three things. You can take the top card and compare the centuries. The second thing you can do is you can take three treasures from your personal supply and give them to another player. Uh, and then you get to draw three cards, or you can go into the discard pile and you get to do three things. You get to keep a card, give one of the cards away, and then decide which card is at the very top of the discard pile. So that's the Trinitarians. So next, we got three orders left. We're gonna cover the Carmelites, and the Carmelites are pretty simple. Here's St. Therese, great Carmelite, right? If I wanted to, I could play St. Therese of Lisieux right here on the Carmelite space. Of course, the Carmelites, we say they're founded in the 12th century. We don't know exactly which date they were founded on, so we have to say 12th century. All the other orders, we know exactly which date they were founded on. So we put St. Therese of Lisieux here, and the Carmelites are pretty simple. They live a very simple life. They love to be cloistered. Uh, there's some active Carmelites, of course, but they are built on community. And so the first Carmelite you play gets you five treasure. Then the second one gets you eight. Then it goes to 12. Then it goes to 17. Then to 23. And if you are lucky enough or fortunate enough to play the sixth Carmelite there, you get 30 treasures. And for then, from then on, any Carmelite that's played on that spot gets you 30 treasures for the remainder of the game. Again, the Carmelites, uh, we're kind of focusing on that community or that cloister life that they have. And the more that they can have in the cloister, the more treasure we can get for Jesus. And so that is a very simple uh, component, but can be very lucrative if you're looking for extra treasure, especially at the end of the game with a Carmelite. And lastly, we'll cover the Servites and the Augustinians. The Servites, let me see if I can get one, uh, find a Servite here. Here we go. We got St. Juliana Falconeri the great Servite. And this is actually a beautiful picture of a statue there at St. Peter's, I believe, in the Vatican at St. Juliana. So she's a Servite. So I'm gonna go ahead and place her over here on the Servite space. Of course, we can see the Servites were founded in 1233. And if you just for reference wanna know uh, where, they're, where they're at, the, we've already covered the Carmelites, the Trinitarians, the Franciscans, the Dominicans. Now we're gonna cover the Servites and the Augustinians. So the Servites are unique in that you get to get cards and also uh, move some cards around. So you get to, when you play a Servite, draw as many cards as there are players in the game. So if it's a two player game, you draw two cards. If it's a five player game, you draw five cards. And then however many cards you draw or however many players are in the game, you're gonna take treasure from the storehouse and you're gonna give it away. 
uh, and you might be able to give all five treasure to one person or you might spread it around a little bit, but that's another component is that you are, you're, you're resigned to giving yourself away as a Servite. Um, and so you're gonna take that treasure and give it away. And then finally, you're gonna look into your entire hand and you're going to place two cards from that hand on top of the draw deck. Now you could leave some great cards for the next player, or there might be some strategy too where you could play a Servite, decide which card goes on top, and then you could play a Trinitarian and then draw the card and match it up with a Trinitarian for extra treasure. So there's some really cool aspects that you could do with the Servite. In a two player game, you're gonna draw two cards and you're gonna put two back on top of the draw deck with, with more people. Uh, not only are you gonna play it and give, be able to give more treasure, but you're also gonna be able to gain some cards with the Servite as well. And finally, we have the Augustinians. And the Augustinian uh, card is, again, uh, there's a lot of strategy here, right? You gotta think, think about it. And I, I like, I like uh, playing with the purple game mat because every game I play, it's so different. Sometimes uh, certain orders are drawn and other times they're not. And so, so each game is so unique. Uh, in this case, I've got Blessed William of Toulouse. By the way, you need to get to know him. He's amazing. Um, I really enjoy getting to know him uh, as I was putting this together uh, here in 2020. Uh, but he's an Augustinian, right? Uh, or St. John of Sahagun from the base game or St. Rita of Kasha. Anytime you see the Augustinian symbol, you could play that on the Augustinian space and you will receive one treasure for every order that actually has cards on it in the game. So in this case, if I placed uh, Blessed William of Toulouse right now, I would get six treasures because there's six orders that have cards on them. So you wanna maybe hold on to the Augustinians for a little while and maybe play them near the end of the game. And what that helps to emphasize is that the Augustinian order, the Augustinian order really draws from the order written by St. Augustine of Hippo, which really kind of, um, uh, you know, transcends time, you could say. And so they were, uh, there was almost like for eight centuries, you know, seven or eight centuries, that order was there and was, uh, uh, was written uh, and followed by some, but it was wholly embraced uh, in the 13th century. And so in the same way, we're gonna kind of wait back. We've got the Augustinians in our hand, and then the later part of the game, when we play them, we'll more than likely be able to gain lots of treasure because there'll be a lot of orders played. We've had some games where we get 15 or 16 for every Augustinian played because every single order has a card on it. So that's the Augustinian order. So all that to say, those are the six from uh, the Mendicant Order expansion. The Mendicant Order expansion is kind of the mothership expansion for, the, uh, for all the religious orders in that it comes with a purple game mat. Uh, but you would need to get the monastic and clerics regular expansion to get the uh, to unlock six other orders, uh, and then also there is the religious expansion, which is the 2020 booster deck, which gives you four more orders as well. So if you're interested in that, you can watch those videos where I will detail exactly what those triggers do uh, in that game. But thanks again for watching. Really appreciate your interest in the Dominican Order expansion and for either purchasing it or considering purchasing it. I hope you and your family enjoy getting to know the Dominican Order Saints. Take care.